history in the 60s when he became one of the first black big city mayors. Gary Indiana's Richard Hatcher has died. CBS 2's Mike Buccinelli joins us live from the newsroom. Mike Hatcher's election was a turning point in the political fortunes of African Americans. Indeed it was, Jim. Richard Hatcher became mayor of Gary in 1968 and served for 20 years. Nobody, least of all a reporter, will forget the 1960s. This was the time of riots in the big cities. By 1966, I had been assigned to cover Northwest Indiana, including Indiana's second largest city, Gary. While there was much fear, no real riots took place in the Steel City, but an event of much larger import did take place. As a former Michigan City man, Richard Hatcher became one of the first two black mayors ever elected in major cities. He and Carl Stokes of Cleveland were elected the same day. And the next New Year's Day, Hatcher took over, held his first official news conference announcing his cabinet. Since then, Gary has never been the same. It's fairly obvious that Gary neither came apart at the seams, as some had predicted, nor did the Negro population reach the green pastures that some had expected. As for the mayor's announced goals, they are not yet achieved. But whatever I think all of us are saying this afternoon, that if the two major parties in this country fail us and reject us once again in 1972, then they must accept the consequences of that act. And when and if they leave us no choice, and if we form a third political movement, we shall take with us the Chicano. In democracy of personal rights of liberty. Independence for you and independence for me. Perception not the same. Civil arrest in the major city. See you, all of you are, are history makers. I, I'm just so happy to see you. And I just hope that you keep the legacy that we have tried to establish here of including everybody's history in the history of Gary. And that's gonna be hard because there are people who are trying to push us out and say we didn't have anything to do with it. 
I have a speaking engagement in another city in the county, and the lady said explicitly what she wanted me to talk about. I want you to talk about the early history of Gary. Now, I want you to stop at 1960. Now, what does that tell you? Of course, you know I won't be stopping at 1960. Active in civil defense. Don't let people tell the young people, that's what they're telling, that he ran people out of Gary. He didn't run anybody out of Gary. They're the same people that are sitting in the cut right now that are getting ready to come back because they ran you to Maryville and Sherryville or where have you. Okay, now it's going to make me stop. The 86-year-old died of cancer and heart failure in the hospital late last night, surrounded by loved ones. Now, earlier this evening, one of those loved ones agreed to sit down with me. It's a story you'll see only on two. He was just the best dad. But years before Richard Hatcher would become father to Reagan and two other girls, he was making history. Dad was a springboard for others to feel like they could do it. By do it, she means enter politics, because when her father first entered the political arena by taking a seat on the Gary City Council, it amounted to a profile in courage. He introduced the ordinance that allowed black people to live wherever they wanted to live in Gary. Before that, they couldn't even live uh, where they wanted. Then he took the audacious step of running for mayor of Gary. When he won the Democratic nomination, Reagan says the party abandoned him. They actually supported the Republican candidate against Dad in the general election that November, but he still won. Soon he was being courted by a who's who of American politics. Here he is with Coretta Scott King, and here he is on the left with Bobby Kennedy. Years later, he said candidate Obama had captured the same type of energy. This spirit that I feel now is exactly uh, the way it was then. After Martin Luther King was assassinated, Hatcher counseled President Johnson. President Carter also called upon the Gary Mayor for advice, even asking him to move to Washington. He was like, no. He told the president no. He said he, his work was not done in the city of Gary. And he never left Gary and never stopped dispensing advice. As current mayor Karen Freeman Wilson found out two months ago at the unveiling of his statue outside City Hall. And he said, there's life after being a mayor. And, you know, I just cracked up. After he assumed the mayor's office and later held the National Black Political Convention in Gary, there was a groundswell of black candidacies that ultimately led to victories like Harold Washington's in Chicago and beyond. Some people say things like um, there would be no Barack Obama if there wasn't a Dick Hatcher. And I don't know if that's quite true, um, but I certainly see where the lines the dots got to each other. He was just amazing. Now, by the time he left office, more than 300 African-Americans held office in city halls all across the country. Hatcher twice ran Jesse Jackson's presidential campaigns. The Reverend is set to deliver the eulogy at Hatcher's funeral one week from tonight. In the newsroom, Mike Puccinelli, CBS 2 News, Jim. Richard G. Hatcher, ex-mayor of Gary, Indiana, and champion of urban and black issues, dies at 86 Mr. Hatcher was one of the first two black people elected in 1967 as mayor of a large American city. Richard G. Hatcher, one of the nation's first big city black mayors who in two decades leading Gary, Indiana, sought vainly to stem its poverty and blight while championing cities and blacks generally, died on Friday night in Chicago. He was 86. His death at Mercy Hospital and Medical Center, was confirmed by his daughter Renee Hatcher. The cause was not given. Mr. Hatcher was elected mayor of Gary on November 7, 1967, the same day that Carl B. Stokes, another black Democrat, was elected mayor of Cleveland. Mr. Hatcher served until losing a 1987 bid for a sixth four-year term. Mr. Stokes did not seek re-election after serving two two-year terms. Mr. Hatcher was a 34-year-old city councilman and civil rights activist when he ousted the white incumbent in the Democratic mayoral primary and narrowly won a racially bitter general election. He took over a sharply segregated city of 175,000 that had become half black amid white flight, which would accelerate after his election. He also took over a city whose economy was dependent on a single industry, steel whose boom and bust history and automation were key factors in Gary's decline despite the efforts of Mr. Hatcher and subsequent mayors. 
When Mr. Hatcher was elected, Gary's poverty rate was approaching 15%, black unemployment was twice the rate of white joblessness and, the new mayor said, more than 40% of housing in the city was unsound or needed major renovation. Crime levels were high and municipal corruption, a major issue in his reform campaign, was rife. During his 20-year tenure, Gary garnered several hundred million dollars in federal aid for subsidized housing and job training programs. A hotel was built, the local airport was expanded to handle commercial traffic and, in Mr. Hatcher's first term, the police force was enlarged by 40%. Despite these efforts, when Mr. Hatcher left office in 1987, 25% of residents were living below the poverty level, unemployment exceeded 20% and violent crime was still a big concern. Substandard housing abounded, vacant storefronts lined business district streets and the population had plummeted toward 117,000, according to the 1990 census, 85% of it black. Mr. Hatcher repeatedly predicted that the city was about to turn the corner. I think we're on the verge of a great new surge forward, he said in a 1978 interview in the New York Times, and he sounded similar refrains in his re-election campaigns. He and his supporters argued that racism was a major force in Gary's continuing slide. Citing a tremendous departure of existing businesses and private investment money in the 1978 interview, he charged, there's almost a vested interest. Am for more on this story, visit the news article link.